Hey guys, welcome back to Ben Talk Sports. Now after beating the Charlotte Hornets, the Utah Jazz have now won 21 of their last 23 games and are the number one seed in the Western Conference and have the best record in the entire league at 25 and 6. So naturally, people started asking, are the Utah Jazz contenders or just pretenders? Now that's the question we're going to try and answer today and just overall talk more about the Jazz this season because I feel like they aren't being talked about enough. But before we start though, please smash that like button as it really helps out the channel. So without further ado, let's begin. So first of all, let's just talk about this entire Jazz team in general. Now currently, they have the best record in the league and they are first in terms of margin of victory as they have a blend of great offense and great defense as they are ranked 4th in the league in offensive rating and 2nd in the league in defensive rating. Now besides that, they are one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the league, mostly because of the stifled tower Rudy Gobert. Now plus, they are one of the most efficient teams as well as their entire starting lineup except for Rudy Gobert, is either above or just under 40% from behind the arc. And they are combining efficiency with volume as well, as they take and make the most three-pointers in the league by far. But now that we got the advanced stats out of the way, let's take a look at some specific players that are major contributors to the Jazz's surprising season. I mean, when talking about contributions to Utah's surprising season, we obviously have to start by talking about their star player, Donovan Mitchell. Now, Mitchell this season has been just as good as his prior seasons, as he's putting up averages of 24.2 points, 4.4 rebounds, and 5.1 assists, while taking a career high in 3-point attempts, but despite taking more attempts, his efficiency has actually improved as he is shooting his career best from behind the arc. But this should come as no surprise because Mitchell last season in the playoffs broke Stephen Curry's record for most threes made in the playoff series in their exciting 7 game duel against the Denver Nuggets. Now even though they lost that series last season in heartbreaking fashion, Mitchell's performance was absolutely amazing as he averaged over 36 points per game on 50-50-90 shooting splits. So Mitchell has shown the ability to put the team on his back when needed to. But looking at the Jazz season, it doesn't look like he has to do much carrying at all. Now moving on to the next player, we have the stifled tower Rudy Gobert. Now after Gobert signed his 5 year $205 million extension with the team, the largest contract by any big man ever, everybody absolutely went off on the Jazz saying that the front office made a terrible decision by giving Rudy that contract and even Shaq has chimed in and said, I'm not gonna hate but this should be an inspiration to all the little kids out there. You average 11 points in the NBA and you can get $200 million. You know when someone starts off a sentence by saying, I'm not gonna hate, they're gonna hate. But anyway, because of that, Rudy has came out this season with a chip on his shoulder and is not disappointed as he is posting his best per 36 minute stats of his career because he is playing just slightly over 30 minutes per game this season and as the two-time defensive player of the year that he is, he could be looking to add to that collection, as he is the backbone in one of the league's best defensive teams. But I kind of think Rudy is an underrated offensive player. Now obviously he can't stretch the floor and knock down three-pointers, but his screens and just his finishing around the rim has been amazing. With a combination of size and agility, to get Rudy a bucket, you just throw it up somewhere near the rim because he has an enormous catch radius for alley-oops. But let's hope he can sustain being so dominant in the paint come playoff time. Now next we're going to talk about Bogdan Bogdanovic. Now I'm going to make a big claim here because in my opinion, I think that if the Jazz had Bogdanovic for their last postseason, they would for sure beat the Nuggets and I think that they could even beat the Clippers and make it to the conference finals because that's how good Bogey is. He was their second leading scorer last season as he averaged 20.2 points per game on 41% from 3. 
And while this season he started off the year in a bit of a slump, he has since played better and is currently the 4th leading scorer on the team, averaging about 16 points per game on 40% from behind the arc. And I predict that if he doesn't get injured and continues to get better as the season progresses, he's going to be the X factor for the Jazz in the playoffs. Now moving on to the point guard of this team, Mike Conley. When Mike Conley was traded to the Jazz two seasons ago, people expected that he was going to be just as good for them as he was for the Grizzlies, but I think it's right to say that he kinda disappointed last season, putting up some of his worst career averages while being really inefficient. But this season, he has came out and actually looked like Mike Conley again averaging about 16 points and 6 assists per game while shooting 45% from the field and 41% from behind the arc. Now, If the 33 year old point guard can sustain this level of efficiency and stable play, it just makes Utah's offense that much scarier in the playoffs. Now last but not least, we're going to be talking about probably the front runner for the 6th man of the year award and one of the best bench scorers in the league in Jordan Clarkson. Now Clarkson this season has been a really good surprise for the Jazz as he's their second leading scorer right behind Donovan Mitchell and is the leading bench scorer in the entire NBA with 18.2 points per game showing that he is worth every penny of that $52 million contract extension that he signed in 2020. And he's been playing so good that some people think that he should be an all-star this season. Most notably, Charles Barkley, as in an episode of Inside the NBA, he said, Jordan Clarkson going with the, the guy who's probably going to be the sixth man of the year. That's why I put him on there. He's been the best bench player in the NBA this year. They got the best record in the NBA. You know, most people don't know that he has been fantastic this year. That's why I got him on my list. And true to your word, you did not have Anthony Davis on your on your list as a, not as a like reserve. An this ain't lifetime achievement yeah, award. Yeah. Jordan Clarkson is having a great year. I he want is. to reward him. Okay. Over Anthony Davis. Yes. While people will dismiss Barkley right off the bat as he has made some outlandish comments before, now this one isn't as outrageous. I mean, Davis is currently sidelined from at least two to three weeks with a calf injury, so he is unlikely to participate in the All-Star game anyways. And if Anthony Davis isn't selected by the coaches and his peers to be in the game, Clarkson has a strong case to be someone that can take over his spot for because of how effective he is for the Jazz this season. So lastly, do I think that the Jazz are a legit contender this season? Yes, I do. Now, even though my pick to win the championship this season is still either the Lakers, Clippers, or the Nets, I do think that Utah has a chance to challenge them and win the title. And also, I have heard a lot of people recently comparing this season's Jazz to the 2016 Atlanta Hawks, which surprised everyone in being the number one seed, but then got swept by LeBron in the playoffs. But I personally think that this Jazz team is a way better team than the 2016 Hawks because they have a legit star player and a closer in Donovan Mitchell. So hopefully, we can see Utah make it to at least the conference finals this season. So with that being said, thank you guys very much for watching this video. We are pushing for 1000 subscribers in 2021. So if you guys liked it, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications as I upload new videos every single week. And thanks for watching.